Hi, it's Dr. Scott Watson with a tutorial on how to create a virtual classroom. In this day of e-learning especially, the idea of creating an online classroom where students can go and explore and pursue different activities is very exciting and it's one of the neatest um, projects I've, I've seen. Um, kids like to use them, teachers, uh, you can create these. So um, the big picture is we're going to use Google Slides and then in Google Slides we're going to put some graphics and those graphics are then going to be hypertext linked to different um, apps, uh, different uh, videos, could be a YouTube video, uh, to different websites, uh, games, drills, tutorials, things like that. Two utilities you should have on hand to use during this process um, include some kind of an app for trimming the margins and resizing graphics. On a Mac, I'll be using Preview. Remember, we're going to be linking these graphics, hypertext linking them, and if they have too wide a margin, they might overlap one another. So resizing them is important. And then the other thing is a way to remove the background. Some of the images you'll find have um, cluttered up backgrounds, and you want to just isolate the image itself. So I use the website remove.bg, but there are other websites as well. Okay, let's begin by creating a new Google Slide project. And uh, first we're going to remove all the words that appear. We don't need any of these. Uh, we're mostly going to just use graphics anyway. And now to this, let's, we'll name the project too. We'll call it uh, Virtual Classroom. You could call it whatever you want. And then we're going to add a background. So the first thing I'm interested in is adding uh, the walls and the, the floor that you see in the background. So I'm going to go to Insert Image search from web. This is just one way to do it. And I'm going to search for um, floor to walls background and see what turns up. And look, there's all these floor to wall backgrounds. Okay, and for the purposes of this video, we're just going to choose one that uh, I think can work. Um, it may not be the greatest, but I'm going to just select one and then choose, uh, click on insert. And it's going to place it in there. And I'm going to need to resize this um, so it covers the whole slide. Um, we'll do that right now until you get uh, what you will like. Okay, so now we've got our uh, floor and wall. The next thing is why not put a bookshelf? So I'm going to go again, insert image, search from web, and this time I'm going to put a uh, transparent bookshelf. And again, I could just be doing this uh, right out on the web and, uh, dr and dragging it in. And I'm going to just go ahead and select this first one here and say insert. And now I've got a bookshelf. And you can see the bookshelf is a little uh, wider on either side. So if you wanted to, you could actually download that image and trim it up. For now, I'm just going to go with the way it is. But let's uh, shrink it and move it over to the side here. OK. All right, so in my classroom, I have a bookshelf. Um, and then what am I going to put on that shelf? So again, you just go ahead and download images. Now here's where I have already, just to save time, I've downloaded some images and I've resized them and I've removed uh, background. So I have a little bust of uh, J.S. Bach, a composer. I'm going to resize that and put that on the bookshelf. And that'll be one of the things that um, students could then uh, click on. And I'm going to take um, a trophy and put that also on the shelf. The trophy will represent, you know, playing games, you know, some kind of a, uh, a drill or practice um, thing that students could win or lose. So that's why the trophy. And, and you could put, you could fill this whole bookshelf with different things. Um, I'm also going to put a piano in the room since uh, this is a music classroom. And put that over there. And how about a snare drum? Put that in the, the room and resize that. Now I've got all these images, right? So what do we do with the images? Well, we want to link uh, to the images. I'm going to put one more thing in um, a picture frame. And notice I removed the background so that the picture frame would appear to be empty. But inside the picture frame, I'm going to put another image. Uh, this is a screenshot of um, the cool program in Credivox. Right, and I'm going to put that inside there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, one of the images like this piano here, select it, and we're going to choose the insert link to that image. And I found a virtual piano online. I'm going to go ahead and copy the URL, the uh, web address for that virtual piano. And that's what I'm going to link that image to. Just paste it in there and apply. So now when a student presses on the piano, they will get a link to go to that uh, virtual piano. And I can do the same thing with, say, for instance, Incredibox, which is a really cool online game. I'm going to put a link there to, um, to Incredibox. So go ahead and copy that link and then go back to my virtual classroom and paste it. And now when somebody touches on the um, picture, it'll 
take them to Incredibox. Um, for JS Bach, and this is a, a neat uh, website that tells students all about Bach. So anyway, going to link that Bach bust. Uh, and if I move the bust, by the way, on top of the piano, right, that, that would still, the link would still work. So it doesn't really matter where I have it. The trophy maybe is going to be just some music games. The drum maybe is to a, a virtual drum and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of cool things you can do. Another thing is because I have um, the uh, Chrome extension Bitmoji, I can also put myself, um, I can go to the Bitmoji extension and you can just search for Chrome extensions and the Bitmoji extension and then create your own uh, Bitmoji. But I've, I've created one already and I'm going to go ahead, uh, right click or control click and copy the image and then go on to my uh, Google uh, slide and then paste the image. And now I've got me um, in the classroom, right? So I can, I can move myself over here. So there's lots of cool options. Now, what if I wanted to link just um, part of an image? I want to show you another cool trick. And that is that you could um, put a shape in, like let's take a rectangle shape. And I'm going to click on just the keys of the keyboard. And I have to sort of make this go sideways to do this. But I want to make it a transparent image. So what I'm going to say is make the line here um, transparent. And let's make the um, color of the rectangle transparent. And in doing that, we now have what appears to be the keys of the piano, but is really a transparent rectangle that we would link to the virtual piano app rather than the entire piano. So there's all sorts of options like that. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and add a whole bunch of things, uh, maybe fiddle around with editing the background and so forth, and we'll end up finishing our project. All right, now we've refined our virtual classroom, and uh, we have all these links that you click on it. It takes you to different websites, different objects, different videos. Um, this trophy takes you to a game site and so forth. Um, we want to share it with people. So let me show you a bunch of ways you can share it. Under the file menu, you could download it as a PDF. And once you do that, it's kind of cool. Um, if you look on your desktop, then you'll find a PDF that when you open it up and you click on different things, like I'll click on this pizza and it actually takes me to the Groove Pizza website. So the PDF can actually be interactive. Another way is from the, um, the share button over here, you can just get a, a hypertext link and then you put that link on a um, website or you put that link in a Google Doc or whatever your students are in a learning management system assignment, they click on the link and it takes them to your virtual uh, music classroom. Now, say you want to put this um, virtual music classroom on a website, uh, you can go ahead and get the um, publish to the web and embed, right, and go ahead and publish it. And what you'll end up doing is getting the code that you can then copy and paste in a website. Um, if you use Google Sites like I do, uh, it's even easier. Because once you're in the editing mode of Google Sites, you can go ahead and just double click and choose that you want to put a Google um, document, in this case, uh, Google Slides. Um, you can find it by just searching for it. Or you could just go to recent if it's something you've been working on. But once you find that, there it is. Um, what you do is say insert and it's pretty much done for you. Now I'm going to resize a little bit, uh, make it bigger. But that uh, virtual classroom that we just created, uh, there it is. And now it's part of my uh, Google Sites. And I'm going to go ahead and um, click on the publish button. It's publishing it right now. And let's view what the actual website looks like uh, that I just uh, added to there it is right and again if I click on that pizza it's going to take me right to uh, the Groove Pizza website or if I click on the sheet music it'll take me right to noteflight.com so kids can compose music so all of these links work from my website because it's embedded remember that you can have any one of these objects link to yet another um, slideshow virtual classroom so for instance if you have a classroom that you go to the main classroom and want to go to different rooms you could create different slides that are different rooms as well or to other teachers um, Google uh, virtual classrooms made with uh, Google Slides oh and one more thing choice boards are basically the idea that a, a student can choose different activities so in a sense a virtual classroom is like a choice board but if you wanted to make something more deliberate um, like a table where different cells had different activities that they could choose to do and by clicking on those cells it would take them to um, the app that they need for that activity or the YouTube video that they need to follow along with and do that activity um, you could use the same process in Google Slides to create choice boards. Mm -hmm.